Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about level curves. So the level curves, level curves, these are also called contour lines. So the level curves of z equals f of x, y are the two-dimensional curves. So are the two-dimensional curves two-dimensional curves we get when we set z equal to a constant. So when we set z equal to a constant. So in other words, uh, when we set f of x, y equal to a constant. So whenever we do this and we get a two-dimensional curve, uh, we call it a level curve. Um, if this was a function of three variables, we would call it a level surface. Um, the graph of all the level curves is called a contour map. Let's go ahead and do several examples of finding level curves right away so you see how simple this actually is. So EX means example. Let's take this first example. Let's find the level curves of f of x, y equal to the square root of 64 minus x squared minus y squared. And the question is to find the level curves, okay? So to find the level curves, all we have to do is take our function and set it equal to c. So you take this entire piece here, right? This is our f of x, y, and you set it equal to c. So we take the square root of 64 minus x squared minus y squared, and we set it equal to c. And then we just solve until we get something familiar. So it looks like we can get rid of the square root by squaring both sides of this equation. So let's do that. So squaring this side here and squaring this side here, that'll give us 64 minus x squared minus y squared equals c squared. And now it looks like we can do some more math. Maybe we can um, subtract the 64 from both sides. So that would give us negative x squared minus y squared equals c squared minus 64. All right, subtracting 64 from both sides of this equation. It kind of looks familiar, but not quite. If you multiply everything by negative 1, all of the signs end up switching. So when we do that, multiplying by negative 1, we get x squared plus y squared. And then flipping the signs here, the negative 64 will become a 64. And this is minus c squared. And so you see these are circles. For example, if we were to take c equal to 0, we would get x squared plus y squared equals 64. So we would get a circle of radius equal to the square root of 64. So we would get a circle of radius 8. Right? So this two-dimensional curve would be a circle of radius 8. So this is 8, this is 8, this is negative 8, this is negative 8, and this dotted circle here, I'm making it dotted just because it's easier for me to draw dotted, well, not dotted anymore. So this green circle here, this would correspond to c equals 0. So this would be our level curve. What you can usually do is you can just do this. So c is a constant, right? And then 64 is a constant. So when you combine them, you get some other arbitrary constant, which we'll call k. So you see, this equation here gives you all the level curves. And these are circles, right? These are circles. So that's how you find level curves, right? You just take your function, and you set it equal to a constant, and then you solve, and then you get something uh, familiar. Let's go ahead and do one more example. Why not? Here we go. How about uh, this one? f of x, y. f of x, y equals uh, e to the 1 minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, and again, we want to find the level curves of this function. Let's find the level curves. So the first step is to take the entire function and set it equal to c. So we have 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and that's equal to c. 
I kind of want to rewrite this in a nice way. I'm thinking we can take the natural log of both sides. So we end up with ln x of this equal to the ln of c. The reason we do that is because now these cancel. And so we get this. I'm just doing some math. Subtract 1 from both sides. So we get negative x squared minus y squared equals ln c minus 1. And then just like before, multiply by negative 1, and we get the exact same thing we had in the previous example. Switching all the signs. Again, you can just call this k if you like. So we get x squared plus y squared equals k. And so again, we have circles. Okay, so circles. So that wasn't on purpose. I just picked one that I had written down here. I didn't know the answer. So in both cases, the level curves to both of these functions are circles. Okay, let's do one more, and maybe this next one uh, won't be circles. So maybe it'll be different. So let's see. Let me pick one that I have written down here. I haven't uh, done these. Ooh, how about this one? Uh, f of x, y. f of x, y equals the natural log of the absolute value of um, y minus x squared, a little bit different, right? a little bit different. So again, the first step, solution, is to take the entire function and set it equal to c. So we have ln, absolute value, y minus x squared, equal to c. And then to solve, uh, or to rewrite this, we can get rid of the ln, so we can exponentiate both sides. So these go away. So you get the absolute value of y minus x squared equal to e to the c. When we drop the absolute value, we get a plus or minus. So we get y minus x squared equals plus or minus e to the c. And now we can add the x squared to both sides. Oh, this is pretty cool. So we get x squared plus or minus e to the c. These are parabolas, right? These are parabolas that are just shifted up and down, right? Infinitely many parabolas, right? One for each choice of c. You can write this as x squared uh, plus or minus k. I'll just put plus k, where k is equal to plus or minus e to the c. And so in this case, we have parabolas, right? Parabolas. So kind of a cooler example than the other two. The other two both ended up in circles. And so this one gave us parabolas. And again, you can do that. This is a, a constant, so you can just call it whatever you want. So we decided to call it um, k. So let's go ahead and do a couple more. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's try this one, f of x, y equals uh, e. Here's another e one. And we have 1 minus x squared plus y squared. This looks like one that we did earlier. Um, but let's see what happens. So again, we start off by setting it equal to c. So 1 minus x squared plus y squared, and that's equal to c. And then again, to get rid of the e, we will take the natural log of both sides. So ln e, 1 minus x squared plus y squared equals the natural log of c. And these cancel, so we get 1 minus x squared plus y squared equals the natural log of c. Subtract the 1, so we get uh, negative x squared plus y squared equals ln c minus 1. And we can rewrite this in a nice way. This is really y squared minus, right, minus x squared equals ln c minus 1. So this is a little bit different. These are hyperbolas, right, hyperbolas. Remember, when you have an equation like this, we have a minus, uh, it's a hyperbola. And you could rewrite it as y squared minus x squared equals k. So we have hyperbolas uh, in this example. Let's do one more, one more problem. Last one. This one looks kind of scary, so let's try it. Uh, f of x, y. f of x, y equals cosine. This one has a trig function in it of uh, x squared plus 2y squared over 4, okay, over 4. So again, we'll start the same way, right? We'll start the same way. We'll start by taking our entire function and setting it equal to c. So we have cosine of x squared plus 2y squared over 4 equal to c. 
So if cosine takes this quantity and sends it to C, that means the arc cosine takes C and sends it back to this quantity here. Oops, I forgot the 2. So then you could um, multiply by 4. So multiplying by 4, that would give us um, would give us x squared plus 2y squared equals, and then here we would have 4 arc, arc cosine of c. And um, these are ellipses, right? These numbers are different. You could divide by 2. Basically, in an ellipse, this has to be a 1. So if you were to divide everything by this and make this a 1, um, you would get uh, ellipses. These are ellipses. Ellipses. So uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit different uh, than the other ones. Recall the equation of an ellipse. One way to write it is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. So that's basically what we have here, right? You would have to uh, divide everything and to make this a one. So you would divide everything by four arc cosine. See, I'll do it so you see it. It looks pretty horrible when you do it. It would look like this. X squared over, dividing by this, you would have 4 arc cosine of C plus, and then here you would have 2y squared over 4 arc cosine of C equals 1. And you say, well, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like this yet. Um, it does if you write it like this. And again, I wasn't going to do it, but I'll do it so you see it. Uh, and again, this is not necessary to do. It's just, just to show you that it can be done. You would write it like this. This is actually going to be, these cancel. Oh, how nice. So um, I don't have to do any more work there. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to do something funky, and I just realized that those cancel. So arc, cosine, so many Cs. And that would be, that would be the formula, right? So this matches the form x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And, and an ellipse a is bigger than b, so this number here should be bigger uh, than this number. Assuming arc cosine of c, uh, we're going to assume here that it's positive. So I hope this video has been helpful. And um, again, the moral of it is whenever you're looking for level curves, you just take your function and you set it equal to c. That's it.